uh, so I uh, head the computational psychiatry lab, and what we do in this, we try and measure some process that we think is relevant to psychiatric disorders using computational models, then we try and change it with drugs or cognitive therapies or electricity and see whether it makes people better. This, oh, it's moving about itself. This is an example of some, one of the things that we um, uh, often do. So this is looking at variability and it's something that you might learn. And what you can tell uh, from, when you look at the models of this is the variability can be caused by a couple of different things. It can be caused by change in the thing you're learning. And if that happens, then you should learn really quickly, or it can be caused by randomness in the thing you're learning. And if that happens, you should ignore changes and learn uh, not very much. And so people in the team, Wang Jun Lin is going to speak later on, and Erdem, who was in the team, is now with, working with Kath. And they've looked at this uh, process in people with depression, particularly when they're learning about positive and negative things. Then Joost, who's looking at this uh, with the pharmacological manipulation. Alexander Kaltenbach and, and uh, Chamath, who are looking at uh, primopexal and dopamine and reward learning, and some other people that we're working with as well. <laughs> uh, the sort of cool information that's like relevant to this is taking that same idea and applying it to a different context. So this is, you can think about mood variability and what causes mood variability in clinical uh, populations. And if you think about clinical populations like bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder, they both say, I've got variable mood and it's a problem. Um, but that can be caused by the same thing. So we apply our model to the reports of mood variability in these groups. And what we find is that they don't just have the same sort of mood variability, they seem to have different types of mood variability. So bipolar disorders specifically have this change in the mean of the thing that drives the mood, and borderline personality disorder has the change in the randomness that occurs in the mood. So they seem to have different sorts of variability. Thinking about the application of this, if you look at the effects of lithium at treatment, you see no effect in overall variability, you see a specific effect on that sort of bipolar type change in the mean variability. So it tells us something about how these treatments might work. Thank you very much.